So, um, yeah, why am I here? So, I work at MPAC. I'm a senior research engineer over at MPAC. Uh, my background is actually in computer systems engineering. I have a, a bachelor's and master's both from RPI. Um, so I know a little bit about coding. Um, also, prior to coming to MPAC, I worked for a company called Onto Technologies, which was uh, known as uh, the Duck Corporation before that. So from there, I know a little bit about open source. Uh, we basically developed video codecs. Uh, if you look at what, net, what is now known as WebM, uh, that was, uh, my company was uh, eventually bought by Google, and WebM is the, is the video codec, or the eighth generation video codec that we worked on. So we did a, uh, the Aga Vorbis Theora codec was also uh, one of our projects, and eventually WebM, and uh, what you typically see in a lot of flash videos, uh, stuff that we had developed. So I've uh, been involved in, in open source for quite a while, um, and now I'm working at MPAC. And, and Those I, of you remember the first day we didn't have, oh, you started talking. I, I figured, it's okay. It's all <laughs> okay, uh, sorry. You remember the first week, we didn't have pizza. This week, we didn't have plates. And no, that's how no. we start the beginning and the ending. This is a makeshift plate. Napkin, divide and conquer. So my first, first big message is, you know, regarding open source, you know, it, it is incredibly valuable. Uh, you never know where it's going to take you. I think, you know, largely what happened on two, uh, we achieved our success with, uh, with uh, certainly with Adobe and with a lot of uh, other companies because we had put our VP3 codec out there as an open source project, so people could you know, see what we were up to, look at our, you know, kick our tires, uh, work with our software in, in some some fashion, and then as they became comfortable with us and with our what we developed. They would then become, you know, uh, customers of our of our other products, our services, and, and that sort of thing. So, uh, if anybody's interested in a in a sort of commercial view of what you can, where you can go with with uh, open source uh, software, I'm, I'm happy to talk about that offline or, or uh, whenever about that as well. So anyway, up to the present, uh, talking about uh, MPAC, and uh, we have a bunch of different projects going on. Um, we love projects where we are involving artists and technologists uh, to, to, you know, in collaboration, close collaboration. Um, there's a couple of specific projects that do involve open source uh, software uh, and some in-house tools that we're also interested in developing on open source platforms. Uh, of course, I don't need to, I'm, I guess I'm preaching to the choir when I talk about the accessibility and you know, being able to tweak things and get the code and really modify things to what you need it to do. So open source is, is very, very attractive. Um, also, a lot of the specialized software that gets used in performing arts and so on tends to be very special use and can be rather expensive and, you know, it, it, it's, it's uh, quite annoying a lot of the time to kind of hit uh, the, the walls of, of systems and not being able to extend them and so on after you've spent you know, $3,000 on a software package and the last thing they want to do is, you know, let you actually change something. So we love in-house uh, working with uh, developers, working with artists who are technically savvy. Um, and one particular group that we, we have worked with a lot uh, is called the Open Ended Group. Um, there's a, a three individuals, uh, the, well, there's no leader among them, I guess, but the chief technologist among their group is a, a guy by the name of, um, of uh, Mark Downey, and uh, he is a graduate from the MIT Media Lab. He has a PhD from there, so he also knows a, a bit or two about uh, coding. And most of the software that the Open Ended Group has been working with is all based on this uh, open source, uh, start off as this thesis and now has become this development environment uh, called Field. So that's one of the big projects I'm gonna talk about today, and hopefully maybe get some interest. You know, we're, we're always looking for you know, collaborators and people who either wanna you know, work on the platform or develop with the platform or extend it to use other tools. Uh, you'll see as we you know, sort of demonstrate it, um, some, of the, some of the reasons that that's, that's sort of exciting. Um, and then also, it's going to sleep on me here. Um, with regards to a lot of the systems that we're working with over at MPAC, they're all, you know, they've never, a lot of things have never been done before. A lot of the stuff with large scale displays and audio systems and all that sort of stuff. Uh, just, you know, no one has really had a system like that before. So there's always an opportunity for custom software. And we're looking into things like, you know, immersive environments and using gaming engines with multiple displays and, and that sort of thing. Uh, so again, you know, the open source community with things like um, Blender. I mean, how many of you guys are familiar with Blender, the game engine, the, uh, the, the authoring 3D uh, uh, animation, and so on? Really attractive for that sort of thing. Um, 
and especially because it's a, it has a whole tool chain of you know authoring as well as a, a game engine and, and toolkit for actually deploying stuff. So it's very very interesting. Um, so this semester, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm going to be also talking to some of the computer graphics classes and some of the, and the gaming sciences classes about ways to potentially collaborate on projects doing that. So large scale immersive visualization type of stuff. Um, whether it's based on Blender or a, a, you know, supposedly the Ogre Engine, the Crystal, you know, all these kind of things. Very, very interesting, all that kind of stuff. So given that I only have 15 minutes, I should probably focus on, on feel. So um, you may have seen you know, some of the videos I just have rolling here. And this is, uh, it's all available if you, if you Google open-ended group field, you'll find it. Um, and this is actually a, a, one of the pieces that they have developed using field uh, this is a piece called Loops, and you can actually get the source code for this whole piece. So you can you know, look at it um, and see how it actually works. This was developed with uh, a choreographer by the name of Merce Cunningham, which is, he's, you know, he was one of the, the premier choreographers in uh, the United States. He actually, um, I'm not quite sure when he passed away, but uh, to, to be able to work with him and capture his work, you'll hear I think he is actually the one nav uh, narrating uh, the piece. And they put um, motion capture, motion tracking uh, markers on his hands. So as he told the story, they captured that motion data and then used Field as the visualization engine for that. So they can look at that sort of thing, uh, at his motions in much, much different, uh, in, in a much different uh, way than you know you would normally think. Sometimes you can see the hands, you know, sort of through their motion. You never physically see the hands. Um, but once you know they are, you can imagine, you know, kind of what's going on. But it's, it's very abstract. Uh, it's very um, removed from the original reality of it. It's, you know, uh, visualization is sort of like that. It's not simulation. You know, I assume you guys all know the difference. Visualization versus simulation. A lot of typical people always think like, oh, visualization is all like, you know, uh, building, you know, the exact copy of it, you know, uh, virtual reality sort of thing. where. What we like to focus on is visualization is more an abstraction, looking at data in different ways, looking at the non-obvious connections between data and the representation. So this is a good example of what, what I like to refer to as, as visualization. Um, it's not a literal translation of something. It's a more abstracted one. Um, and one interesting thing that this also led to, just as, as some more background, and I'll run the video sort of in the background for that as well, sort of see some things going on. Um, it led to a collaboration between MPAC, the Open Ended Group, and the Tetherless World Constellation. I'm sure you're also, you know, some of you are familiar with the, the work that's going on there with data.gov and with Professor Hendler and Professor Fox and, and uh, Professor McGinnis have been doing in terms of large scale data sets and so on. So this led to a collaboration where uh, we're working with Mark and with the Tetherless World on new ways of visualization and interactive visualization using the field engine, using the data sets that, uh, that, that the Tetris world has access to, and uh, kind of jumping off from there to say, well, okay, how can we really look at this data in different ways? Um, so what you're seeing here, again, is also an artistic project. You can sort of see from point clouds and things, we have uh, uh, some actual you know, people that you can sort of recognize. Um, a lot of the work that the open-ended group uh, does is in 3D, so this is sort of a, a little bit of a, you know, certainly a watered-down version of, of what's going on. Um, they do a lot of stuff with point clouds. We've uh, been extracting a lot of uh, uh, stuff using computer vision algorithms to abstract structure from motion, that sort of thing. So this all different disciplines sort of being combined and working together. Um, so here you can see you know, sort of there's a person on a stairwell and uh, that, you know, again, the abstraction of kind of what's going on. It's kind of, kind of neat. But all the graphics you're seeing are done inside a uh, field. And here, there's, it's a, a, a quick time version of it, but it's uh, originally is done uh, interactively and live inside a field. So, mentioned here, and if you want to get more information, the best place to go is openendedgroup.com. Uh, and there's a, a number of different uh, artworks there. You can find out you know, more of the background and their process. Uh, there are three people. One is you know, kind of 
strictly uh, an, a traditional artist, uh, traditional, he works with Maya, he works with a lot of the more closed tools, but develops a lot of conceptual stuff, and then uh, hands that off to uh, Mark, who does a lot of stuff in terms of the computer manipulation and so on. Another member is more kind of marrying the two pieces together and more conceptual things as well. Um, so you can see uh, uh, more history of what's been going on, a little bit about the background of uh, this project. I don't know if I mentioned it, it's NSF funded at this point, so you know it's it's a it's a real project. You know, our yeah, loves projects like that that we we are getting funding from outside sources and, and uh, connecting all the dots and you know living up to our promise about impact being in some kind of what is it the nexus of art and technology and science and all that sort of thing. So we're very very proud of this project. So.